Our Father, we do thank you today. We bless your name for the things we've been learning. Thank you, Lord, because of the impact and the influence of your word. Thank you because of the things we're learning in the series in Joshua. I pray, Lord, that you strengthen us from day to day as we go from study to study in Jesus' name. We pray that as we look at your word today, your spirit will take these words and strengthen us in our hearts, in our hands, in our ministry, in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see, Lord, the great things that we need to learn from your word. So we'll become more effective in the life we're living, in the ministry you have granted unto us. Bless all your people tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. As you, as you would have noticed, you'll see that uh, the book of Joshua is very rich indeed. And it talks about not only our lives, it talks about the ministry, the leadership that the Lord has given us. We've gone through chapters 1 and 2 already. And today we're looking at the first part of chapter 3. Please open your Bible, chapter 3 of Joshua, reading from verse 1 through to verse 5. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shechi, and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel, and lodged there, they passed, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the host, and he commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then shall ye remove from your place, and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Those are the verses we are looking at today. And because of that thing we have read in verse 5, that says, Sanctify yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We have titled the message of tonight, Preparation for a Spiritual Supernatural Breakthrough. Preparation for a Supernatural Breakthrough. It affects the individual. It concerns the whole church as well. That if the individual believer is expecting and waiting for and hoping for a supernatural breakthrough, then there is a necessary preparation as we see throughout the scriptures. And if the whole church is going to have a supernatural breakthrough, then there is a necessary preparation that we ought to make. Because the Lord himself so demands that if we're going to have such a breakthrough, then there should be such a preparation that will match the breakthrough. As we look at the history of the children of Israel at this time, you will see that a lot have been promised unto them. You see in chapter 1 that God said he had given them the land. And as we read, if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 7, the Lord said the people that were inhabiting the land of Canaan, there were seven nations, mightier than the children of Israel, greater than the children of Israel, more powerful than the children of Israel. And yet the Lord had told them the land was flowing with milk and honey. A great thing awaited them. And he had promised them that was what they were going to have. But here we find an obstruction, a hindrance, a barrier, a formidable obstacle between them and the promise that the Lord had given them. And a great thing that the Lord had given unto them. He said, I've given it unto you. And yet the problem was there. And now they came to the borders. And in their mind, they must have been thinking about, meditating about the promise of the Lord, what he had given them. But then the river stood before them. And it was not just a simple thing. Because we read in verse 15 of this same chapter 3, it says, And as they that bear the ark were come to unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of Jordan. See what is in the parenthesis there. That means in the bracket, for Jordan overfloweth all its banks all the time of harvest it so happened at the time that the lord brought them uh, to this jordan it overflowed that means it was not just a simple problem 
it was a formidable obstacle. Some say they will be wondering if we're going to cross over and possess the land, why is it at this time that the Lord has brought us in here? But then we know the history of the children of Israel. When they came out of Egypt and they were to get into the passage in the wilderness, there was a Red Sea. And just at that time, the Lord moved and divided the Red Sea. Forty years had passed. Since that miracle took place, but the Lord wants to remind them, the same God is still here. The same power is still available. And the same miracle is still possible. And maybe you are facing something like that today. You've seen a great dream. You've got a great promise. And you just see ahead of you the thing that the Lord has promised you as an individual, as a family, as a local church. And uh, you've thought about it. You have even gone ahead boldly to share testimony about it. Just at the time you are to have that thing, there is an object in front of you. A mountain in front of you. An obstacle in front of you. Understand? The same God will roll your mountains away. Amen. Will take that Jordan away. Amen. And even though it appears that the devil is saying he wants to see how you will be able to make it because of what is standing between you and the promised success and the promised blessing. It only takes some days and weeks. You will see the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. And so it's an encouragement to every believer when there is an obstacle between you and your promised healing between you and your promised deliverance between you and your promised child bearing or between you and the recovery of your spiritual laws between you and the provision the progress and the promotion that the lord has promised you take heart just a little while jordan will roll away and we will get into the midst of our miracle in jesus name three points we're looking at today number one rising early and overcoming procrastination rising early and overcoming procrastination number two is reflections on the act before progress i've read it to you and as you are going to read yourself later chapter three and four you will find that the act of the covenant was mentioned many many times in fact 16 times in chapter 3 and 4 the ark of the covenant of the lord is mentioned and then uh, it's also referred to as each referring to it with the pronoun five times and uh, the commentaries i read and studied in preparation of the outline uh, mentioned the fact that that makes 21 times and uh, there is a study of numbers by some of those commentators and they observed that 21 times is seven times three and they understand the importance of that three and the importance of that seven and then when they look at the symbolism of the ark of the lord and then they apply it to the life of the believer they tell us that if we take the steps that we need to take looking at what that ark symbolizes there is no doubt you are going to have your miracle and then number three is readiness for exploits through purity readiness for exploits through purity let's come back to point number one and joshua please stop there the word and uh, those who have studied uh, languages they tell us if you are going to start a new uh, kind of uh, composition comprehension essay or whatever you don't start by that word and because the word and is just a word that links you to another thing and when it says and starting the chapter with and what does that mean it's telling us the spies return and when the spies returned, they gave him a good report. And then it says, immediately after that, there was no time to waste. After you have known the will of God. After you have known that the hearts of the unbelievers have melted because of you. That the word of God gives you the promise. Your conscience grabs the promise. Even the unbelievers are testifying to the promise of God. And everything on high and below, everything within and without, all, co all co concord or they, they, they agree together that the promise is yours. Then there is no time to waste and Joshua rose early. He waited before he knew the will of God. He waited before he had the promise of the Lord. He waited before he had the call of God. He waited before the spies came back and told him, the land is ready for us. It is as the Lord has said. He waited before the confirmation came, but immediately the confirmation came. There is nothing to wait for again. We wait, and that's wisdom, before we know the will of God. Before we know the mind of God. Before the confirmation comes. 
but immediately the confirmation comes and we know the mind of God then there is no procrastination anymore there is no hesitation anymore there is no delay anymore and Joshua rose early in the morning uh, by the way you need to understand that all those who are serious with God that God had done something spectacular definite in their lives they never waited procrastination is a terrible thing in the lives of many people look at Genesis chapter 22 and you'll find that the people God uses the people that have exploits and wonders in their lives there is this thing that characterizes them no procrastination no delay no hesitation no tardiness no waiting behind once they knew the will of God in um, Genesis chapter 22 and in verse 3 and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him you'll find here that he rose up immediately anytime you know the will of God anytime you know the mind of God immediately that's the time to rise and get uh, going and get something done in Psalm 119 verse 60 Psalm 119 verse 60 I made haste no delay once again no procrastination once again no hesitation once again have you known the mind of the Lord have you known the will of the Lord is the duty that God is calling you to is that duty very clear to you I made haste I delayed not to keep thy commandments therefore uh, after we have known that this is a thing to do we rise up immediately and we get that thing done it means it was not slothful but it was diligent his heart was in the thing the Lord had called him to and he was not going to entertain the habit of procrastination uh, the, uh, there's a book of quotations and uh, this book of quotations uh, tell us that uh, procrastination is a thief of success in fact another quotation says it's the foundation of failure and defeat another person puts it this way he says uh, procrastination that means hesitation and delay is a fertilizer that produces where uh, difficulties grow that is if you think that uh, the task is difficult and because of that you are procrastinating you are delaying the more you delay the more you procrastinate the more the difficulties will grow and then they tell us that no farmer ever plowed a field no farmer ever planted the crops and no farmer ever reaped a harvest by turning it over in his mind you don't turn it over your mind over in your mind you turn it over right on the ground there do something practical immediately that you know this is what you do do not delay get the work done in galatians chapter one galatians chapter one in verse 15 but when it pleased god who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal a son in me that i might preach him among the heathen was the next word immediately immediately i conferred not with flesh and blood that means there was no procrastination once he knew the will of god once he knew the mind of god once he knew that this is a thing to do he rose up and he did that thing in ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 this is what the watch of the lord is still telling us reminding us and assuring us it says whatsoever thy hand findeth to do do it with thy might for there is no work no device no knowledge no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest well then we learn from joshua that his mind was in the work the lord has called him to and our mind must ever be in the work the lord has called us to well what is that thing you have been delaying rise up and do it what's the thing that you have been afraid of rise up and do it sometimes we procrastinate because uh, the work looks difficult it looks enormous it looks very very big and we do not know how we're going to attack approach the work why don't you break it down into little little beads somebody said how do you eat an elephant if it's your duty to eat an elephant it says only one way break it into small small beads cut it down into small small beads and then take a bite at a time 
if that walk is very difficult, very enormous, very big, looks like a great mountain, and that's why you are procrastinating. Cut it into little, little bits, and then have a bite at a time. A little at a time. And then procrastination will stop in your life. Spiritually too, there are times we need to pray. There are times we need to write to somebody. A time we need to visit someone. A time we need to supervise. A time we need to get something done. What makes us not to be successful? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it another time. That's how time will go. And eventually that thing is forgotten. And it's never done. Don't procrastinate. Don't say, Don't delay. Rise up and do it immediately. Come back to Joshua chapter 3 verse 1. And they removed from Shittim. And came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel. And lodged there before they passed over. Uh, in uh, uh, that part when it says and they removed from Shittim you might wonder you think that is just there and there is nothing to learn from that oh yes there is a lot to learn from that please understand that these people uh, there are about 3 million people and you have many of them men and you have many of them women and you have many of them children and they have been camping over here in Shittim and they could see ahead of them River Jordan. And the Lord has not told them how they were going to cross over River Jordan. And then their leader Joshua told them, Arise, three days, we're going to pass over this Jordan. Do you realize there was no question? Do you realize there was no disputing? Do you realize there was no debate? Do you realize they didn't ask him, How are we going to cross over? There is no boat. How are we going to cross over? We remember when uh, Moses divided the Red Sea. He had a rod in his hand. Joshua, you do not carry any rod. How are you going to do it? Well, they didn't ask any question. It appears they all have faith in God. That as God had said, God will have a way of crossing over Jordan. You know, when we become too intelligent, we ask too many questions. The time comes in your life, you ask a question one too many or too much that uh, you, you want to know now you tell us to move on you tell us to rise up you tell us to cross over how are we going to do this how are we going to do this a time comes your questions will bring unbelief in you it will make you to sit down and you will not be able to rise up and do what the lord wants you to do jordan or no jordan move on god will work a miracle in your life no question once we know god is there his methods may change, but his power will never change. Wasn't it a wonderful thing? Joshua said, arise, let's move on. And then all the three million people, all of them, they moved on. And in fact, it says uh, there was no invalid among them, nobody that, you know, they had to carry. They were all healthy. How I pray for that day, that all of us here will be so totally healthy. That whatever we need to do, nobody will say, but look at my condition. Wouldn't it be a wonderful day when all our members were totally healthy? Nobody in the hospital, nobody in any other place, nobody is lacking behind. We say, rise up. Everybody rises up. That day will come. Yeah. I said that day will come. Yeah. And so they all rose up and they were ready to move on. We go to point number two now. Reflection on the ark before progress. That means reflection, we're meditating now on the ark. We're thinking now about the ark. We're looking at the scriptures now concerning the ark. I'm reading from verse 2. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Let's stop there for a moment. What's this ark? Well, this ark, you need to understand, is a representation of the presence of God. And it's also a representation of the power of God. Uh, just write this down. There will be no time to read through all the references. In 1 Samuel uh, chapter 4. You remember that the children of Israel, they went to the battlefield. Ophni and Phinehas were with them. And then the Philistines, they, 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 they defeated them. And they killed a few people. And then these people thought, what are we going to do? They sent to Shiloh, they said, go and bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came, then they shouted. They were very, very happy. They knew that that is a representation symbol of the power and the presence of God. In fact, the Philistines became afraid. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 7, and it said, God is come into the camp. That's the significance of the ark. Although at this time, because they were not living right, they were still defeated. 
but at least the Philistines recognize God is come into the camp. Let me show you the power of that ark. They eventually defeated the children of Israel. They captured the ark of the covenant. And then they put that ark of the covenant in the shrine in the house of their idol, Dagon. And then when they woke up in the morning, what happened to Dagon? It fell down. Oh, they said that must be accidental. Maybe wind blew, something happened. It never happened like this. They set up a Dagon again. Maybe they made some incantations to make a Dagon stand and never to fall again. When they came back the following day, Dagon was falling. The head was cut. The hands were cut. The stones were all apart. From that day, they never worshipped Dagon anymore. That means that that, that act represented the power of God. And as you come to Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, we see the content in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, reading there in verse 4. Which arch, the golden censer, and the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that arch the manna, and Aaron's rod that bordered, and the tables of covenant. Uh, three things there. The tables of covenant, that is uh, the, uh, the, the tables of stone containing the commandments of the law. The law of God. Not only that, it says it at the pot that contained manna. And you know Jesus said, I am the bread that is come from heaven. It talks about Aaron's rod that boarded when the children of Israel were arguing. Everyone is holy. Why is Aaron uh, so separated and so high? God said, let each of the elders in Israel, let them bring their rod. And they brought their rods and Aaron brought his own. By the time they came back the following day, that rod had brought off uh, branches and flowers and everything. And then God approved the priesthood of uh, Aaron. And Jesus Christ is our high priest. He is the bread from heaven. And he is the one that that thing symbolizes. And he is the word personified. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so, as we talk about the ark of the covenant of the Lord, we are actually talking about the Lord. And as the ark went before them, the Lord Jesus Christ is going before us himself. And if the Lord is with you, who can be against you? If the Lord goes before you, all your Jordan will be divided, will be parted in two in Jesus' name. In Joshua chapter 3 now, verse 3. And he commanded the people, saying, Where ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Go after it. That means, uh, you know, wherever the ark is going, just follow and uh, for, uh, they understood that because of the ministry or what the ark had done for them in times past. Please uh, open Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10, verse 33. Numbers 10, 33. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in three days' journey. To do what? To search out a resting place for them. The ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them to search out a resting place for them. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And it says, I will give you rest. And it's Jesus Christ that the ark symbolizes that is searching out a resting place for us. In this world, he will give you rest. And then when you cross over the final Jordan to the other side, he will give you eternal rest. But then you remember what they were told in Joshua chapter 3. It says the priest, the Levites, will bear the ark. Remember the ark symbolizes Christ. And then if the priests are bearing the ark, what does that mean? That's referring to you and to me. We who are the ministers of the gospel, we are to lift Christ high, lift him up, as savior so that the sinners as they look up they won't see you they will see the ark of the covenant that is going to lead them to peace of mind and rest they will see jesus as savior lift jesus up that they will see him as sanctifier that as the people are following and they feel they see the adamic nature in them and they're saying how can i be free from this who shall deliver me from this body of sin you are bearing christ up you are lifting christ up you are not lifting yourself up they can see christ and they see the sanctifier lift him up that those who are sick that even before you fast and before you pray you lift him up you say he's a great physician 
by stripes were healed. It's the ark of the covenant. He's searching out a resting place for us. As you lift him up as a great physician, when they look at him like this, whosoever looketh on him, he will live and they will be well. Are they bound? Are they oppressed? He is a deliverer. You lift Jesus Christ up. Tell them the stories of how he opened the eyes of the blind. The stories of how he delivered the oppressed. How he cast out all the evil spirits, the authority in his word. As you lift him up as a deliverer, you are the priest, you are the Levite bearing the ark. And as you are going before them, and you lift Jesus up, they will be delivered in Jesus' name. Do they lack power? And they need Holy Ghost power in their lives. You lift up Jesus Christ as a baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Because he is the one that is to baptize the people with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And as you lift him up, all you are doing every Sunday when you are there. All you are doing every Monday, every, every Thursday when you are there. Is that I come to talk about Jesus today. You don't talk about, uh, you know, the people are bad. The people have gone this way. The people have gone that way. Of course, there is a time when we talk to them about sin. We know that sin is bad. And we talk to them that sin is evil but we can talk about sin for many many years if we don't leave jesus up as a savior as a sanctifier as a deliverer as a healer as a helper as a one that is all in all for us as sufficiency they'll never be free from their sins therefore let's be like the priests and the levites we lift up jesus christ when you finish your message next sunday those who are preaching uh, if you are preaching or any other time ask yourself did i lift up jesus christ did they see jesus christ did they see him as the one that has all power to be able to deliver them have i done it sufficiently enough that everyone that is suffering everyone that is weak everyone that is sinful everyone that is backsliding has seen jesus christ if you have done that you have preached a good message if you have not done that no matter what the message contains if you have not lifted up jesus christ enough for them to see you have not done a good job let's come back to joshua chapter 3 and now in verse 4, and Joshua said unto the, uh, sorry, and yet there shall be a space between you and uh, it. 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. That ye may know the way by which ye must go. Please look up here. Uh, why did he tell them that? I want you to understand. Let's say for example now, all of us, if we were standing up, and then if all these brethren in this hall, you go back to the back of this hall, all our brethren over here, you go back to that other place, and everybody, you are standing up, and then I come over there on the same level, and I'm right in front there, and I'm carrying something on the head, and then you are following, and the whole ground is level. The people at the back, will they see? You'll be looking at the, uh, at what? at the back of uh, you know the person in front of you but when there is a distance and you leave a wide gap of this number of cubits before them on all the people that are far away as they look up like this they will see their conspicuously that the priests are carrying that's what the lord is telling us lift up christ so high above every man above every example make people know he's unique make people know he's special May people know there is no equal to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift him up so high that the people that are following, they will be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ and then they will be able to know the way to go. Look at the end of verse 4. It says, For ye have not passed this way here to fall. Ye have not passed this way here to fall. That means you are now, uh, you are now going through unfamiliar territory unfamiliar path and because you have never journeyed this way before you need to keep your eyes on the ark and isn't that is something for the child of god we've never gone this way before we've never lived this life before tomorrow when tomorrow comes it will be a new brand day when temptations come tomorrow it will be a new temptation circumstances that come tomorrow crises that may come tomorrow it will be totally new we've never seen this before and because we have never passed this way before keep on looking unto the lord jesus christ in hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus don't let anybody that they take that away from you in a time of trial in a time of temptation in a time of crisis in a time of problem 
before you get married, after you got married, when you are going through some troubles, some things you never knew, you never saw before. Remember, it is that act that led them to find a resting such out, a resting place. You keep on looking at that act, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you keep on looking unto Jesus, every problem will be solved. Every Jordan will be divided. Every difficulty will be taken away. Every stronghold will be demolished in Jesus' name. We come back to, the, to Joshua chapter 3 and we're looking at the last point. Readiness for exploits through purity. Readiness for exploits through purity. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. I want you to take that verse for yourself and think about that verse and think about the breakthrough you're expecting in your life. The wonders that you're expecting in your life. And the word of the Lord tells us tomorrow, not tomorrow, maybe tonight for you, maybe next week for another person, maybe next month for another person, maybe next year for another person. But something is definite. A miracle is coming your way. And then the way Joshua said it, he said, The Lord will do wonders among you. There was no doubt about it. And there is still no doubt about it. That wonder will come. That breakthrough will come. But then he said, Sanctify yourself. That means there is a preparation to be made. Sanctify yourself. In Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Verses 7 and 8. Leviticus 20. Verses 7 and 8. Sanctify yourselves therefore. And be ye holy. I am the Lord your God. That tells us there is the human side to sanctification. Sanctify yourselves. But there is a divine side as well. In verse 8. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord. We does what? will sanctify you. The Lord who sanctifies. In verse 7, there is a human part. In verse 8, there is a divine part. We understand then that sanctify has two shades of meaning. One, the human responsibility. And second, the divine action. On the human side, sanctify yourself. On the human side, cleanse yourself from all the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. If you are really expecting a miracle, examine yourself, examine your heart, examine your thoughts, examine your actions, examine your interaction. Do you have bitterness against somebody? Is there somebody you will not forgive? Is there somebody you are envying? Is there jealousy somewhere? Are you having bitterness in your heart? Because Jesus said, except you forgive those who have offended you, right from the heart, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive you. Is there something that will hinder your miracle? Now think about it. Compare that little sin that that brother, that sister, that neighbor has done. Compare it with the dividing of your Jordan. Compare it with the removal of your stronghold. Compare it with the healing of the incurable disease. Compare it with the promotion, the progress he wants to keep you. That offense that you find difficult to forgive, put it in the balance here. That miracle, that great sin that you need to get, put it on the balance here. Which one is greater? You have been married now for seven years, for ten years. You are looking for a child. And as you are looking for a child, that's your breakthrough. That's your miracle. And you want this child by all means. And we know God can do it. He did it for Elizabeth. He did it for Anna. He did it for Rachel. He did it for everyone that called upon him with a true heart, a sincere heart. That child you're expecting after 10 years of barrenness. And then the little, she didn't greet me well. She insulted me. And uh, she did something to me I will never forget. That little thing. That's what the Lord is telling you. Sanctify yourself. Take that sin away. You are not going to allow that little pain, that little pebble inside your shoe, to hinder the uh, magnanimous sin, the great sin, uh, the unlimited blessing the Lord wants to give you. Remove that sin and throw it away. Sanctify yourselves. Because if you do, the Lord is going to do wonders among you in Jesus' name. But then we understand it also means abstaining from every appearance of evil. 
you know, the gossiping and the tail bearing. Is that gossiping so important to you more than your miracle? Is the gossiping, is the backbiting more important to you than your miracle? Why do you care about what they have done and what they have said? If, uh, you know, you are looking for your miracle, look away from all those things. Abstain from every appearance of evil and say, I'm not going to allow these little, little things to hinder me. This year, before the year runs out, I'm going to get my miracle. Jericho walls are going to fall before me. And all my miracles I'm going to get. And therefore, I'm going to do my part. All these things that have hindered me unnecessarily, I push them aside. I'm going to have a breakthrough in Jesus' name. But you know, on the side of God, he sanctifies. Because he purges us. He circumcises our heart. He takes away the stony heart. And he cleanses us, he washes us, and he makes us whiter than snow. And then he says, if you do that, then he will do his part. Now here you have, on the one side, yourself. On the other side, almighty God. And he says, what are you to do? Sanctify yourself. What is God to do? He will do wonders among you. Let's say you are faithful. Let's say you are honest. And you remove every stumbling block. And you sanctify yourself. You set apart yourself. You separate yourself from everything that will hinder your blessing. Faithfully, everything the Lord has reminded you, you have taken care of. Tell me, are you going to be more faithful than God? I said, can you be more faithful than God? If you are faithfully done your part, will God do his part? He will do his part. If you will sanctify yourself, if you will remove all those appearances of evil, the Lord will do wonders among you. He will do wonders in your family. A day of revival, a time of revival will come for you personally and your family in Jesus' name. And then he says, for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. The wonders they were expecting in their own case was that that Jordan will be totally removed. But you know that uh, their own wonders didn't stop there. After Jordan was parted in two, the walls of Jericho came down flat. After that, they were in the battles of the Lord. The sun stood still. The moon stood still. New miracles that never appeared before. That we have never heard of before. That's the wonders the Lord wants to do. And before this, uh, you know, our lives run out, we can have some miracles that have never been recorded. That all the testimonies who have been hearing, a new set of miracles. A new set of breakthrough. And all the Lord is expecting is that we will do our part. And then the Lord will show himself strong on behalf of every one of us in Jesus' name. In Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 second chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 and the eyes of the therefore the eyes of the lord run to and flow throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him that's what the lord wants you to do to examine yourself and then to make sure that your heart is sincere your heart is honest. Your heart is holy. Your heart is perfect towards him. If it were not possible, the Lord will not have commanded it. If it were impossible to sanctify ourselves and to render ourselves honest and holy and pure, before the Lord, the Lord will not have said it. Let's now look at Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 6. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, in the course of Abiah and his wife, uh, was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth you understand here Zechariah was a priest of the Lord serving the Lord and Elizabeth was of the daughters of Aaron which means of the lineage of the people also serving the Lord maybe you and your wife are serving the Lord and yet there is a reproach there is a blemish there is a breakthrough that except that breakthrough happens people will be saying where is your God and where is uh, the evidence that your God is a mighty God? It says in verse 6, And they were both righteous before God. Both husband and wife, they were righteous before God. And walking in all the commandments of, in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Now, the Lord was ready to do something in their midst, in their family. As the Lord is ready to do something in our families too. If we are ready, God is ready. I said if we are ready, God is ready. And a new thing can begin even from today. In verse 11, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right hand side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel of the Lord said, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. Your prayer is heard already. 
Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou, shalt, and thou shalt have joy and gladness. Joy and gladness will come. And many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And she shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn uh, to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And it is obedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what the Lord is telling us. The Lord is saying, he is not stopped working miracles. Our God is still as powerful as ever. He's still able to divide the Red Sea. He's still able to divide the river Jordan. He's still able to heal the sick. He's still able to deliver the oppressed. He's still able to give children to the barren. He's still able to give us a breakthrough. He's still able to work miracles, mighty wonders in our midst. And the Lord is saying, He is ready. He's only waiting for us. How many of us are ready to sanctify yourself? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, I want a new day to begin. I want a new thing to begin. I want that miracle. I want that breakthrough. In our districts, how many miracles are we seeing? How many testimonies are we hearing? How many things are we seeing of the things that the Lord has done in the past? He can start it all over again. He can start it all over again. He did it before he is not tired. He did it before he can do it again. He worked wonders before he can do it again. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Will you allow that little bitterness to hinder you from your miracle? That little irritation to hinder you from your miracle? That little offense to hinder you from your miracle? That little hypocrisy to hinder you from your miracle? That little gossip to hinder you from your miracle? That little jealousy and envy to hinder you from your miracle? That little uh, malice to hinder you from your miracle? I won't greet him. I won't talk to him. Big deal. Big deal. I won't greet him. And you are hindering yourself. Open up. Open up. Let your miracle come. Let your miracle come. Let your breakthrough come. All the things that have been hindering you. Brothers and sisters. Loosen up. And give it up. Those things are not too important. Forgive those who have offended you. Love. Care. And be kind. Love your wife, love your husband, love your children, bless the people that curse you, live a life that is transparent, be honest, just live a life as unto the Lord, don't let the devil find anything in your life that he will be accusing you before the Lord, using as an excuse, a miracle is waiting for you. A breakthrough is waiting for you. Your Jordan will be divided. Your Red Sea will be divided. Your Jericho walls will fall down. Your healing will come. Your deliverance will come. All that our prayer warriors have been praying about for you and for your church and for the whole church is going to come through. All that we have been fasting about, all that we have been praying about, it's coming. It's coming. See it coming. See it coming. The fire of revival will burn in your soul. Will burn in your church. And all the strongholds of the devil in your family. Everything will be rooted out. Whatever the heavenly father has not planted in your family. Everything will be rooted out. But my brother, my sisters, don't let anything hinder you. Are you due for promotion in your place of work? It will come. Are you looking for a new job? It will come. Are you, have you got a big dream? A big dream. A big dream. But it has not been fulfilled. It will come. But keep on looking to Jesus. Keep on looking to Jesus. Set your affection on Christ. Set your attention on Christ. Set your concentration on Christ. It's coming. It's coming. The breakthrough. It's coming. Believe the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Don't give the devil a chance to accuse you unnecessarily. Remove that sin. Remove that sin. 
And once you remove it and you are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, don't listen to the accuser of the brethren. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray together. But I want to remind you, when Joshua told those millions of people that tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you, there was no single person out of those millions of people that doubted Joshua. It was the word and the revelation of the Lord. And we are not too many here. God has enough miracle to pass through every one of us here. Every one of all our workers, every one of all our members, the Lord is able. I said the Lord is able. And so you will not allow this time of miracle and revival to pass you by. As others in front of you, behind you, on your side, are getting their own. Your own has come in Jesus' name. And whatever it is that has been a burden in your heart, whatever it is you have been praying and fasting about, you can go back home and rest and be waiting and be expecting that that wonder will come in Jesus' name. And then you'll be ready. You will tell the coordinators and the group coordinators and you coordinators yourself, this is not the time to pass the miracles to other people. You yourself, you need a miracle. Your families need a miracle. And maybe there will be one Tuesday we're going to find out uh, how the Lord has done what we are praying for tonight. Amen. I identify that miracle now. That river Jordan in front of you, I identify it now. That stumbling block, that stronghold, I identify it now. That insurmountable problem, I identify it now. Or make sure you take all those little, little things away sanctify yourself let the lord begin to do wonders in your life father in the name of jesus we well, thank you because you are a never failing god you are a god that is still alive you are a god that is mighty and powerful you are a god that will never fail as we read the story of the children of israel you are reminding us that these things were written for our learning that we who are living in this generation we might have hope I pray, oh Lord, in the lives of all my brothers and sisters, every hopeless situation, you will run away in Jesus' name. Lord, you have called us in this church. And it is not pride. You have given us a message that all the other churches around there are looking up to us. And we cannot see anything that should hinder us. We talk about salvation. We talk about sanctification. We talk about restitution. In fact, in our church here, we have found people so sincere. We have found them so open. We have found them so frank. We have found them so humble that the restitution that is done, even in our midst here, I don't know too many other churches where people are sincere and honest enough to do that kind of restitution. We're doing what you have told us to do. We're cleaning up our lives. We are cleansing our lives. We are opening up everything. You told us to sanctify ourselves. In all humility, O oh Lord, we have done what you have told us to do. And I've heard about it in our districts. Some of us going to our district coordinators. Some of us going to our group coordinators saying, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for that. Lord, you know us. It is not that we have not, uh, we have not done some things we shouldn't have done. But you know we are open. You know we are sincere. You know how we have opened up everything. Oh Lord, bless your people in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, the little, little things that the devil has been using. A little gossip that doesn't really matter. A little backbiting that doesn't really, it's not really important. A little bitterness, a little unforgiving spirit, a little kind of uh, not caring for one another that the devil is magnifying to hinder us. Oh Lord, tonight, wash it away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you sanctify your people. You cleanse your people. You make us holy in Jesus' name. As you make us holy, silence the devil on our behalf in Jesus' name. So that when the devil comes to you and is accusing us, 
and he's telling you reasons why we should not have a miracle, you will tell him to shut up. You will tell him you have cleansed us. You will tell him you have sanctified us. You will tell him you have purged and purified us. You will tell him that you have nothing against us. Lord, I pray, confirm that cleansing in every life, in every heart, in Jesus' name. Lord, you promised us that tomorrow you will. And Satan cannot hinder you. Angels cannot hinder you. Men cannot hinder you. Witches and wizards cannot hinder you. Our enemies cannot hinder you. Incredible disease cannot hinder you. Mountains cannot hinder you. And there is no stronghold of the enemy that can hinder you. All the witches, all the sorcerers, all the herbalists, all the evil people, all the personalities of darkness in this country all join together. They cannot hinder you. Our miracle has come in Jesus' name. Therefore, Lord, we stand on the ground of faith. We stand on the sure promises of the Lord. You will not fail. You cannot fail. From tonight, we want to see you dividing River Jordan. From tomorrow, we want to see you dividing River Jordan. All the impossibilities in our midst. All the Jericho walls in our midst. All the standing problems in our midst. Let them come down in Jesus' name. The wonders that Joshua spoke about. The wonders that Jesus spoke about. The wonders that your spirit spoke about. The wonders to reveal to us in the dream. Rise up. Scatter your enemies. Do it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that there will be a miracle for everybody. A miracle for every family. I pray, Lord, all these Jordans over overflowing. That have been standing between us and the promised possession. Take it away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that brother that is impotent. I pray that that impotency will be cancelled in Jesus' name. That breast cancer, I command the breast cancer, come out in Jesus' name. That fibroid, I pray, the fibroid will melt away in Jesus' name. That sister that has a junior brother having mental problem, you insanity mental problem, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, we're hearing information. This brother in the hospital, in the hospital. That sister is in the hospital. The wife of that coordinator is in the hospital. The wife, the husband of that coordinator is in the hospital. Oh Lord, I pray that your power will go to them right now in the hospital bed where they are. Oh Lord, you said there will be nobody sick and feeble among us. Rest them up in the hospital bed in Jesus' name. Whatever the devil has been using. To keep any of your children down. Whatever the devil has been using. That the miracles we used to see. The wonders we used to see. The, the breakthrough we used to see. We are not seeing enough of them again. Remove it in Jesus name. Any family where there is a curse. Remove the curse in Jesus name. All the yoke. Break it in Jesus name. Lord we have been walking in those offices. And we are the people to first get there. We are the people to live their lives. We are the people to do what the others will not do. We are so faithful. And because of that, the people, they work on us. We are doing the work, but we are not seeing the promotion. It's the people, the unbelievers that are not doing the work, that are getting the promotion. Lord, where is our own promotion? Lord, where is our own progress? Lord, where is the sin you promised us? All the promotion that the devil has been sitting upon, I cancel the, the hand of the devil in our lives in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that the promotion that you have come to us, which is going to the unbelievers outside, bring the promotion back unto your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray the day when we'll open up the Tuesday meeting or the Saturday workers meeting for testimony. I pray, Lord, we'll have miracle. We'll have testimony. Fill every mouth with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray specially for those who are barren. Faithful people, dutiful people, those who are serving you day and night, like Zechariah, like Elizabeth, that are serving you. And then the people of the world are asking, where is the outcome of it? Oh Lord, I pray, whatever is the root cause of the barrenness, take it away in Jesus' name. 
Give them children. Give them children. Give them children. I pray, oh Lord, that day of testimony, they will come with their testimony in Jesus' name. Lord, sanctify your people. Sanctify your people. Anything you know will hinder this miracle we are praying about tonight. Lord, even if we don't know, even if we cannot see it, if you know it will hinder us, cleanse our lives, take it away from us in Jesus' name. Open up every family for miracle. Open up the church for miracle. Let the day of revival, the day of the supernatural, the day of the breakthrough, let it come once again in Jesus' name. Give us an all-round revival. Revival in our soul. Revival in our heart. Revival in our body. Revival in our business. Revival in our family. Do it for us in Jesus' name. Wipe the tears of your people away. Put the devil to shame. Let your children rise in the ladder of progress. That you put laughter in their mouth. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. How many of you are sure? How many of you are sure that your miracle is there already? Amen. Is it all right to sing on Tuesday? You know, deeper life. We sing on Monday. We sing on Sunday. We sing on Thursday. But for Tuesday, who can give me a chorus that will show we have got our miracle? <laughs> 